Yo, what's going on guys? We have the meta snapshot for patch 11.2b and there was a B patch so they nerfed the Elderwood comp a little bit. It's still playable but uh, a lot of things shifted up. Let's go into the comps. Let's just like run right through this because I know I'm really late on this video. Uh, first note, Samira's broken. Like level 1 Samira I've seen carry so you don't necessarily need the level 2 Samira and she fits in a lot of different compositions. Uh, you want the death blade, another offensive item, and a defensive item, and then you're good to go there. Add in Slayer if you can whenever you play Samira, um, and if you can also do it, do Sharpshooter. For offensive items, you want Hand of Justice, Infinity Edge, all that good stuff. Like, we'll get into more of this later. And then defensive item is either Quicksilver Sash or Warmogs. Those are both good. Um, and I'm not making a separate comp for Samira because it's literally you hit Samira, and then you can just start building around her after that. Uh, so... She isn't really something you could just aim for, uh, so that's why I just make a note of that up here. For all the other comps, let's get into the S tiers. We have Zed, Kale, and Slayers. One thing to note about this patch, there are a ton of viable compositions. There are very few that I was like, oh, these are bad. Like, even the C tiers, they're pretty playable, which is a lot different from a lot of other patches that we've had in the past. Uh, a tier, Warlords, Duelist, Diana reroll, Nasus reroll, Fabled Vanguard Mystic, Mage Elderwood, Ape Brawler, Shivana. Uh, B tier, we have Talon, Sharpshooters, and this is like a reroll version, Dragon Soul, and Assassins. And then in C tier, we have Cultus and Reroll Mage. Cultus, I still see being played, so it's like maybe they're like on the cusp of B tier, but I think they are like the worst good comp or the worst playable comp, if that makes sense. And you can check out all the items and all the other stuff down there, but let's just run through this video really quickly because by the time you see this, like I, if you guys are new, I update the meta snapshot every single Friday, and right now it's like. 10 p.m. Friday, so you guys are probably going to see this released on 11.59, and I'm going to keep my promise of uploading every Friday. So if you guys are new, go ahead, subscribe if you are interested in that. But Zed, Spirit, or Ninja, they're both good. Spirit's a little better, so the S tiers are mainly like Zed Spirit builds. You just want to get the RFC and Runons and QSS on Zed. This is like best in slot. You don't need these exact items, but you definitely want a RFC. And like Hurricane's really good on him because anything with high attack damage, which is what Zed is, Hurricane's just going to magnify that damage the most. And then Zeke's Herald on Kindred really good. If you can't get the Quicksilver Sash, something like Guardian Angel is playable uh, if you're really in a pinch. But Quicksilver is by far the best defensive item on Zed. Now let's go into the difference between the variations. Like for Ninja and Spirit, you slow roll at 7 for both. And... If you get Shen Cursed, go Spirit. If not, you could go the Ninja version if you're hitting a lot of Akalis. Again, the Spirit version is slightly better, so I would definitely try to stick to that. But if you get a lot of good Akali items and you get a bunch of Akalis, you might as well go for that because running both Zed and Akali carry is really strong. And Akali items are like Blue Buff, RFC, and Infinity Edge. Those are really good on her. So if you have all your Zed items already, you have a couple of items for Akali. Maybe you have like a 3-star Zed and then you see a chosen Akali in shop. You could just pick up the Akali and go from there, play the ninja version. Uh, Executioner Kale is the next comp. I did a guide with DQA, and you guys can see those guides down here on my website at bunnymuffins.lol and click on one of these two things. I'll try to leave a card on the top right as well for the video. And yeah, Executioner Kale or Divine Kale, they're both really strong. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. You play Kale and then you play whatever units you hit, so you don't really have a choice to choose between the two. The best version is for Executioner, however, you need Executioner chosen for that, and you don't always get that. Uh, Kale, there are a lot of playable items, and you guys can check that again all out here, so I'm actually not going to waste any time going through this comp because we have like full guides for that written out already. But this is kind of like more of a standard way of playing the Zed comp, you slow roll at 7. This one's kind of like the standard leveling. Uh, you try to go to 8 safely, try to go to 7 safely, and roll down there to get the 2 stars that you need. Next up we have Slayer. This one, I think last week they were A tier, but I think I misread this and they were probably B tier last week, but now they're definitely S tier. Olaf is so strong and he kind of came out of nowhere. No one really played, well, sorry. The very first two days, people were playing Olaf. The rest of that week, no one playing Olaf. And now everyone's playing Olaf again. You want Runon's Hurricane and Deathblade, and then third item, doesn't matter what it is. I prefer Guardian Angel. RFC is also really good. And like Infinity Edge is really good. You could third item, like you can't always choose what you want. But I think like Guardian Angel and RFC are the two best options uh, for the third item. And then after that, it's like you could just throw Hand of Justice or whatever on Olaf. And notice here, I have the Dragon Soul chosen, and when you play this build, you actually want Dragon Soul chosen on Olaf. You don't need, like, Slayer chosen, 
You don't need like, yeah, because Olaf's a Slayer Dragon Soul. And the reason behind this is that the other Slayers are actually pretty good. You could run Pike and you can run Samira. So Olaf doesn't have to play like a crappy Slayer such as Darius to get the buff. And then since you're running Swain for the Siphoner buff, you might as well just get the Dragon Soul with the Dragon Soul chosen. Really, really strong stuff. Uh, notice how we only have seven champions listed out here. So you could add in either two Mystics, you could add in a random Legendary unit, you could add in Sivir for Sharpshooter and to buff Olaf. All these items are really good. If you do play the Sivir, put her right where this Aatrox is with some Zeeks on her, and that'll be pretty good for you. Uh, on to the next composition, we have the A tiers. Again, A tiers, slightly weaker than S tiers, but again, everything's really playable, and since the patch and the set is rel relatively new, all this stuff is going to be viable. It just depends on what game it is. And first, we're going to start with Warlords. Uh, Warlords, they've been going for like three-star Katarina, which is super, super strong. I'd ignore the Trindamir items for now. I kind of just put bonus items on him just for fun if you have room for Trindamir. And six Warlord, nine Warlord, both really strong stuff. And some people have even experimented with reroll Nidalee, so you go for three-star Nidalee, but we're going to get into a different build that does that later, which is in the Sharpshooter build. Some people have done it with Warlords, too, but I think it's stronger in the Sharpshooter build, and when you are playing Warlords, you'd rather have like a Katarina three-star over a Nidalee three-star. So on to the next composition, we have the Duelist. Duelist actually made a comeback. Last week, I ranked it as C rank, but it's actually pretty decent. Uh, it's just kind of weird because you, you're playing reroll Yasuo, you don't always hit it. A lot of people don't like the reroll, and I think the power spike is not as good as like reroll Diana, but you have the benefit of having a lot of other options for your mid to late game, whereas the Diana build, you only go for one build. Same with the Nasus build, you only go for one build. But duelists, they have a lot of flexibility because you could play around with how many duelists you actually go for. So some people like six, some people like four. Uh, both are fine, it just depends what you hit during the course of the game. And itemize Yasuo the same as always, i.e. Titan's Quicksilver, and then random items on some of your other carries, like Lee Sin can hold some of the utility items or some tank items, Yone can pretty much hold anything, uh, Aurelian Jax can hold like Thieves Gloves if you get it, uh, all really good stuff there. So next comp we have Reroll Diana Spirits, nothing's changed on this from last week, you could go either Spirit or Assassin Chosen, if you do get Spirit Chosen, take out Kindred and put the items such as Zeke's and Chalice of Power on Yumi. If you get Assassin chosen, get rid of Akali uh, or Talon, because sometimes we don't find Talon that easily. So if you have like level 1 Talon or level 2 Akali, I generally play the level 2 Akali. Uh, but if you have like level 2 Talon, play Talon over Akali. You could also jump up to 6 Assassins if you get to level 8 and uh, maybe have a Assassin chosen or Assassin spatula. That's really good too. Diana items are pretty simple. You want Infinity Edge, Titan Resolve, and QSS. All three really good items. The only item that I think is like super good is Quicksilver, because if you get perma stunned, unless you have full tank items, like Diana's pretty useless. So you definitely want like Quicksilver plus two other items. And Titan's just good because it's kind of both a defensive and offensive item. And then Infinity Edge is just the strongest damage item for her because she's an assassin. Let's move on to the next composition, reroll Nasus. This comp, maybe it should be a little lower than what it is right now. It's really weird. You could go for like 3-star Vlad and 3-star Nasus, and it's really strong. They both use the same items. They like defensive items and like Titans Resolve. It's a little weird to play. Like some games I played it and it's the easiest first place of my life. Some games I play it and then like I have the same build as I did in the first place game, but then I go 8th for some reason. It's really weird. It gets countered by certain comps and it counters other comps really well. So it depends on the lobby you're facing and you don't really get to decide what your opponents go for in TFT, and you kind of have to commit to reroll Nasus pretty early, but overall it's still pretty decent, still pretty strong. Obviously it's still in the A tier, at least B tier, uh, if I did misjudge this, but I'm pretty sure it's at least A tier, but maybe a little lower in the A tier than I should have placed it. But you just reroll for Nasus. Uh, I'm gonna come out with my leveling guide so you guys know how to reroll, but it's the same as the other sets, so if you guys know the video from before and how to do a reroll, you're already set to go. And if not, remind me to do the leveling video in the comments, hopefully sometime this weekend or next weekend. Fable Vanguard Mystic. Okay, this comp is so fun to play. I, I love watching this because any sort of Vanguard Mystic build, I'm kind of like a sucker for, just because it's like cool to build those units. And one tech I've seen that's very interesting is that people have been playing Wukong Carry 3-star in Vanguard Mystic with Fabled. 
So you have two carries. You have Wukong hitting people, such as like a Bonky Kong, and then you have Nico critting everyone. And it's really interesting to see. I highly suggest you guys try that if you guys want to do the Vanguard Mystic build, but you could do the typical build here if you don't get the Wukong. And also, again, I'm sure you guys are already familiar with this since we talked about it last week. You could go for Vanguard, for Mystic in order to uh, do better against magic damage and hopefully get better units because uh, Rom kind of falls off in the late game and uh, maybe you get Mystic chosen and it's easy to hit the four Mystic that way too. Uh, Mage Elderwood, uh, we have a guide from the rank one player or former rank one player. They were the first player to get to Challenger. Hopefully I should be releasing that guide tomorrow. So I'm not going to talk too much on this. Essentially, you just want to get to five mage, six elderwood, or get to nine elderwood, and Asol just kind of destroys everyone. And uh, it's still a really strong comp. You guys can check out the full guide if you're impatient on my website, but I am going to release a video on it tomorrow as well. Uh, Brawler Shivana, I love this comp. Man, there are a lot of comps I like this set because I don't know. They're kind of like my style. Shivana is kind of like one of my favorite champions in TFT. And you just play a bunch of brawlers. Get Runons on Shivana. I'm missing an item here. You need Deathblade on Shivana, so hopefully I fix that for next time. And Runons, Deathblade, third item does not matter, and she just kills everything. It's really nice to watch. And because Brawlers give attack damage now, she gains a lot more power with the Runons. So Runons is just really broken in this patch, if you guys haven't noticed yet. Uh, Enlightened Talon. Yeah, Talon, it's in the B tier because Talon's just not as strong as the other carries. It's still a decent build, and this is like the classic... Enlightened uh, Assassin build that we saw before with the Depths. Uh, next up, we have the Sharpshooters. This one's new. Uh, we have Reroll Nidalee. Reroll Nidalee is, yeah, it's kind of weird. Like, she just kills everything. I don't know how else to explain it. Like, she throws a spear, it kills like two units. You have the Shojin on her, so she gets a lot of mana really quickly, especially with six Sharpshooter. And then she throws another spear and another spear. So you just need strong frontline to defend until Nidalee kills everything. So Aatrox Sejuani is good. We only have seven units here, so if you have eight units, you could add in like an Azir, put Azir in this uh, place over here, like one of his soldiers there. Uh, you could also play two Mystics if you get to level nine. That's really good too. And yeah, just play around with that. Try to protect your Nidalee as much as possible. And next up, we have the Dragon Soul comp. This one's a little weird. I don't really like it that much. That's why it's in the B tier, because I feel like Dragon Soul is so hard to use effectively. Like, the buff works really well with attack speed, but Tristana is just not that great of a unit, so it's kind of hard to use. Uh, so you mainly just use that for, like, Shibana to auto-attack, or just, like, Rom sometimes never dies to transfer the buffs to someone else if you're only running three Dragon Soul, because so it's a bit of a weird synergy. Um, but Aurelian Soul, he, he can still kill stuff, so it, none of that really matters, but it's better in the Elderwood comp to play. Aurelian Soul, so I wouldn't even go for this composition if you can go Elderwood instead. Uh, next up, Assassins. I, this comp's pretty cool too. Akali one-tapping everything. You want three-star Akali. All you do is reroll Akali, and uh, you do that at level seven, and eventually you get her to three-star, and she just starts one-tapping things, so Zephyr's really good with this comp because you Zephyr a unit, you one-tap like one or two units, and then the other unit comes back. So you're effectively fighting like a 7v7 instead of a 7v8 and then Akali kills a bunch of units and then the Zephyr unit comes back and Zephyr is also good in general because not every carry has QSS so you could kind of punish people or a lot of comps they only run one strong tank so you could Zephyr that tank and since you're playing assassins you could like move them around everywhere and positioning doesn't matter as much for them. Uh, on to the next comp we have the C tiers and this is Cultus. Uh, 9 Cultus is still good a lot of people play it but it's just really hard to get. So the fact that it's so hard to get and the fact that it's not the best comp in the game once you get it, that kind of makes it lower on the list. Maybe I should have put it in B tier, but uh, yeah, maybe I should move it to B tier. But it's like very low on the B tier, in my opinion. Uh, you go carry Callista and you just put RFC is very important. Runons is the best complementary item for Callista and then Rage Blade's just the best damage item. But you could also go like Quicksilver. So you could do like Runon's Rapid Fire Quicksilver. You don't need the Rapid Fire, but it's kind of nice so that she can sit in the corner without being bothered. Um, but just some things to consider there. Uh, onto the last comp, Reroll Mage. No one plays this anymore, so I just wouldn't even do this. If you get a lot of brands early with Ludens, just go for the Aurelian Soul build, put the Ludens on brand, and just keep him. It'll take you through the mid game really easily. So yeah, I would avoid Reroll Mage. But yeah, for items, Bow is the best item. 
because you need a lot of RFCs if you guys haven't noticed yet. And guess what builds RFC? Two bows. So yeah, get get bows. There's not much else to say there. Uh, the whole Sunfire cheese that people were doing last patch, it's still good, but it's not as good as before. So if you get a chain start and get the Sunfire early, you're going to get a lot of other defensive items later. And your power spike from having the early Sunfire isn't going to be as big as it was in the last patch. But it's still good, but that's why I keep them in that low part. Um, you guys can check out like what items are good down here, but again... Tomorrow we have the Elderwood Aurelian Soul Guide from the player who pretty much pioneered it. And then, uh, yeah, hopefully next week I'll, or this week, I'll do the leveling guide. And here's the summary again. So we have like Zed, Kale, Slayers. These three are the best, like, mainly because Slayers can use Samira really easily. So that's why Warlords are really high up too, just because like you hit Samira, you play her, throw in Slayers. So any of these comps, you could kind of transition into the Samira build if you hit it early. Because Samira with Deathblade, a defensive item, and another offensive item is just super, super strong right now. Uh, but yeah, Zed's the best comp, Kale's the best comp. That's why bows are so good. And Slayers use bows, Warlords use bows. Like, everyone's going to be using a bow. So that's why you really want bow in the beginning. Um, but yeah, just avoid reroll mage. Everything else here is going to be pretty good for you. But yeah, apart from that, again, I'm recording this super quickly because it's like really late at night. I need to get this video out to you guys. So, yeah. Uh, see you guys.